Hey, it's Coach Reeves, and today we're going to learn how to solve a system by substitution and elimination. Two different methods, okay? Remember, you still have three possibilities when solving a system. Our three possibilities are our three choices. I could have one exact solution where I get an ordered pair. I could have no solution, or I could have infinite solutions. So we've already learned how to do this by graphing. And those were our three choices. But even though we use a different method, those are our three possible outcomes still. One exact solution, no solution, or infinite solution. So let's look at these. If I had a problem that looked like this, and we're using substitution, I'm going to ask you to see if you can find a variable that would be easy to isolate or to get by itself. In this case, I would look at the top equation and I would say, hey, the y, it wouldn't be hard to get the y by itself. If I move the 3x to the other side, y would be it by itself. So we're going to move the 3x. We're going to say minus 3x minus 3x. This will cancel. That will leave me with y equals a negative 3x plus 2. y is now by itself. I'm going to ask you, since these are the exact same thing because they're equal, I'm going to ask you to take this, which is the same thing as y, and I'm going to ask you to substitute it right here where that letter Y is. These are the same things, so I'm going to put it here. So how we do this? We're going to go negative 6X minus 2 times whatever Y is equals 3. So instead of the letter Y, we're going to write negative 3X plus 2. We're going to write negative 3X plus plus 2. You see what we did? Get the letter by itself and then substitute it into the second equation. We're going to do a little distributive property in just a second, but I'm going to bring down my negative 6x. I'm going to distribute and I'm going to say negative 2 times negative 3x is a positive 6x. Negative 2 times a positive 2 is a negative 4 equal to 3. Now look what happens. Do you see any like terms that you can combine? Hopefully you notice that you have a negative 6x and a positive 6x. Those two are going to cancel. They'll knock each, out, each other out or give you an equal value to 0. So the only thing that I'm going to be left with is I'm going to be left with negative 4 equals 3. When your variables disappear, when your variables cancel each other out, you're left with two choices. Now look what you have. I have negative 4 equals 3. Is this a true statement? This is not a true statement. So if this is not a true statement, I'm going to ask you to write no solution. This problem would be a no solution. Had this been a true statement of negative 4 equals negative 4, where it is a true statement, I would, write, I would ask you to write infinite solutions. Okay? But in this case, not a true statement. Write no solution. Now, when do we do this? Is when the variables cancel each other out. Let's try another problem. All right, so we look at this, we're looking at this equation, and we're saying which variable, variable would be easy to get by itself. I'm hoping that you're looking over here and you're saying, hey, x can be getting, we could get x by itself real easily. I could move the 8y to the other side of the equation. So we're going to go plus 8y plus 8y. This will cancel. And this will leave me with x, we'll do it down here, x equals 8y plus 2. So we're going to take this, and I'm going to ask you to substitute it for what letter? 
Well, these are the exact same thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to substitute this value where this x is. You have to go pull it into the other equation. You have to substitute it there. So what does this say? This says 4 times somebody, 4 times somebody, plus 8y equals 8. So what do we put inside the parentheses? 8y plus 2. So we're going to say 8y plus 2. We do the distributive property. We say 4 times 8y is 32y. We say 4 times 2 is a positive 8. Plus 8y equals 8. We combine like terms. These are the like terms. 32y plus 8y is 40y. Plus 8 equals 8. I move the 8 to the other side. I go minus 8, minus 8. This will cancel. 40y equals 0. 8 minus 8 is 0. Please don't panic here. No, don't stop and say no solution. Keep working the problem. Divide by 40. Divide by 40. This cancels y equals 0. Some of my students would like to stop and say no solution, but z actually 0 is a number. So 0 can be an answer. Okay? So what have we just found out? We have found out that the value, the value of y equals 0. I need to substitute that number in, and I need to find out the x value. So of all this, where should I substitute that? I've already got x by itself. So I should substitute it right here. If I substitute it right here, then I can figure out what the x value is. So we're going to ask you to substitute that 0 right there. What is 8 times 0? 8 times 0 is 0 plus 2. So this turns out that x equals 2. So I have an x value and I have a y value. Do you remember that one of our choices was what? An act, an, a one exact solution. But you have to write it how? You have to write it as an ordered pair. Your teacher will not allow two separate spots all over your paper. They're going to expect you to write this as an ordered pair where you put x, comma, your y value. This is how you should write your answer. Not boxed over here with the y value. Not boxed over here with an x value. It's an exact location on a coordinate plane. You need to write this as an ordered pair. Okay? All right, let's try one more example. Looking at this equation, my choice, I want to get my y by itself. How do I get y by itself? I'm going to move this negative x to the other side. I'm going to jump in and I'm going to say plus x plus x. This will cancel. This is going to leave me with y equals x plus 3. y is now by itself. I'm going to ask you, since these are the same, I'm going to ask you to take this value and substitute it where the y is. I'm going to ask you to substitute it right there. So that means we're going to say 2x minus 2 times whatever my y value is equals a negative 6. We're going to put this value inside this parentheses. So we're going to put x plus 3. We're going to substitute it right there. We're going to do a, bring it down. We're going to do a little distributive property. We're going to say 2x, and then we're going to distribute. Negative 2 times x is a negative 2x. Negative 2 times 3 
is a negative 6. Now, look what happens again. My variables cancel out. I have a positive 2x, I have a negative 2x. Together they cancel or give you the value of 0. So these are gone. They're eliminated, they're knocked out, they're gone. What do I have left? Negative 6 equals a negative 6. Now remember in the very first example we did, I told you if the variables cancel each other out, you have two choices. And then you have to look. Is this a true statement or is this a false statement? This is a true statement. Negative 6 equals negative 6. When this happens, you need to write infinite solutions. All right, so what are your three choices? The first example happened, the variables canceled, but this was a false statement and we wrote no solution. Then we worked the second example and we got one exact solution and we wrote it as an ordered pair. This happened, the variables canceled, and I have a true statement, negative six equals negative six, and we wrote infinite solutions. These are three examples of how you use the substitution property. Now we're going to learn how to do the elimination property. All right, so when we solve by elimination, when we say elimination, that means we would like to get a variable that cancels each other out and disappears. We eliminate that variable as a possibility. So we're going to look at our problem and we're going to say, okay, what happens? What can I do here to where I can get a variable to cancel? And so the question I'm going to ask you is, what if this was a negative 16? Would a positive 16 and a negative 16 cancel each other out or eliminate each other? And you're going to say, yes, a positive 16 would cancel with the negative 16. But how do I get this to negative 16? I could multiply it. I could multiply this times 2, and that would be negative 16. But the rule is what you do to one term, you must do to them all. So I need to multiply this times 2. I need to multiply this times 2. When that happens, negative 5x times 2 is a negative 10x. What I like to do is I like to, I like to put it right next to the other equation. So I would say this gives me a negative 10x. I'm going to write it right here. I'm going to say negative 8 times 2 is a negative 16x. I'm going to say negative 9 times 2 is a negative 18. I put it next to the other equation so I can eliminate, so I can do the combining of the like terms. The whole reason we do this, the entire reason we do this is, look, negative 16, positive 16, these are going to cancel or eliminate that variable. What is left? I have a negative 10x. I have a positive 2x. When you combine these, this is going to leave me with a negative 8x. Negative 10, positive 2, negative 8x equals negative 18 and a positive 22. When we combine this, this is going to give me a negative 40. We divide by negative 8. We divide by negative 8. This cancels. I get x equals a positive 5. Now, I have a choice out of any of these three equations. I can substitute this x value to find my y value. So I'm looking, I'm looking. I'm going to just going to pick this original equation. I'm going to choose this equation right here. So we're going to say 2 times 2 times whatever the x value is plus 16y equals negative 22. Now, if I take this and I substitute it here, I'll get the same answer. If I take this 5 and I put it in this top red equation, I still get the same exact answer. So it does not matter which equation you choose, you will still get the same value. So we're going to substitute our 5. We're going to put a 5 right here. And so we're going to say 2 times 5 is 10 plus 16y 
equals negative 22. I'm going to move the 10 to the other side. I'm going to say minus 10, minus 10. This will cancel. I have 16y equals a negative 32. Now I should do what? I should divide by 16. I divide by 16. This cancels and I get y equals a negative 2. How should I write my answer? Should I leave them apart? No, you're going to write it as an ordered pair. You're going to say my answer is going to be my x is 5, my y value is negative 2. We will write this as an ordered pair. Okay, that's elimination. So let's go to another problem. We're still doing elimination. You have your choice. You're going to look at this and you're going to say, oh, can I knock out the x's? Can I get the x's to cancel? Can I get the y's to cancel? Which one of these variables do I want to try to eliminate? What if, what if I try to get this? What if this was a negative 6x? There's a positive 6x. If this was a negative 6x, they would cancel. How would I get this to be a negative 6x? What would I have to multiply times? Hopefully you're going to say, if I multiply this times a negative 2, that would give me a negative 6x. But then I would have to multiply this times negative 2, and I would have to multiply this times negative 2. So we're going to multiply, and we're going to say 3x times negative 2 is a negative 6x. Negative 7 times negative 2 is a positive 14y. 9 times negative 2 is a negative 18. Look what happens. My negative 6 and my positive 6, they cancel. My positive 14y and my negative 14y, they cancel. Now, do they disappear? No, they don't disappear. Because when you go 14y minus 14y, you get a zero. It just doesn't disappear to nothing. Okay? So this will give you a zero value for the left side. And then I have negative 18 and a positive 18. They cancel, and they leave me with a zero. Do you remember what I said what happened? You have a choice. When your variables disappear because everything cancels, you have two choices. What are my two choices? Well, is this a true statement? Yes, it is true. Zero equals zero. When you get a true statement, we're going to come over here and we're going to write infinite solutions. Got it? Okay, everything cancels, so instead of just writing a blank, or just having a blank space, we write zero equals zero, which is a true statement, which is infinite solutions. Okay, let's try another problem. All right, so we want to try to get a variable to eliminate. One more try. Uh, we can look at the X's, we can look at the Y's, it's whatever you see. But my question is, if this is a negative 16X, what if this was a positive 16x? Negative 16x, if this is a positive 16x, they would cancel. But how do I get this to a positive 16? I'm going to multiply times negative 2. Because negative 8 times a negative 2 is a positive 16. So yes, but I have to multiply this times negative 2, and I'll have to multiply this times negative 2. Whatever you do to one term, you have to do to them all. Negative 8 times negative 2 is a positive 16x. Negative y times a negative 2. A negative times negative is going to be a positive 2y. Negative 2 times 15 is, will give me a negative 30. Look what happens. Positive 16x, negative 16x, cancels. Positive 2y, negative 2y, 
cancels. They both cancel, but you can't just leave a space there. You have to do the subtraction or the combining of the like terms. You're going to end up with a zero on the left hand side. Equals negative 30, a positive 25 leaves me with a negative 5. My variables disappeared. My variables eliminated each other. I'm left with the zero. So remember what we said, when your variables disappear and they cancel out, you have two choices. And now my two choices. Does this make a true statement? Does zero equal negative five? This is a false statement. They do not equal. So you should write on your paper, no solution. All right, so there is substitution, there is elimination. I've done three of each. I'm showing you how what, what can happen along the way to get to all three possible choices of your answers, okay? Here's the bad thing. None of these examples are on your worksheet. I left you to do the worksheet by yourself, okay? Now, try the evens. Do all the evens, see if you understand. I don't know which ones are gonna come out to be a special situation or not. All right, but you figure this out. If you get stuck along the way or you get confused, please email your teachers, email me, ask questions. We'll get you unstuck. We'll help you out. Okay, good luck.